Major four, and this was the start of their journey in the loser bracket. On the Sunday, we're going to be breaking down the map one, Toronto Ultra versus New York. I was really excited for this matchup, and I was expecting them to win the hard point, but I wasn't expecting them to win 3-0 the way they did. So let's go through, break down the hard point, and see what made New York click on that Sunday. What made them really perform to that highest level? Sit back, relax, and let's break it down. Starting off right now, and Kismet, honestly, for me, was the real reason why they decided to click i still think hydra was that guy i think he was that player but we've seen that in the past kismet needed to click on sunday kismet needed to be that player that we know he could be from last year everyone was really really hating on sib me personally i always felt like he was that player i just think again the system around him I just really think they needed to get their timings right and work out a system that works for everyone. Again, shout out to Skies as well. I think him taking a back step pair, he wasn't exactly slaying, but again, I think for the balance of the team, this worked out perfectly. So right now we go through, Kismet goes across, and you see right now if we pause it, okay? So on this map specifically, right, a lot of the not issues but a lot of the um factors that happen is a spawn trap when you're on this map what i find is you can chain hills many many times especially when i'm watching the cdl pros play i feel like even if they're down by what 100 points it's never really over so just as we go through right now i'm just going to get my other screen ready so we can get tack maps open so during this kind of segment right now okay we're on p1 now the thing about this map is I think it's a really good map, but there is one side of it that is very, very dominant. If you can look at the map here, if you can stay on this left side of this kind of line, you have the spawns for P3, P4, to an extent you have the P2 setup as well, and P1. So for P3 and P4, you definitely want to be on this side of the map. For P1 and P2, you actually want to have mid-map control. You definitely want to have this much kind of map control okay so that's what we're going to have in our head as we go through to make sure they keep that map control and see what they do so right now kismet knows he's going to be here instead of walking out he's going to go for a little slide cancel little camera and there's a kill sib goes through they know number two and number seven is insight insight is now dead so if we go back to our little diagram on the left here what's just happened is three people from new york have just got kills so now toronto ultra for a fact, are going to be spawning on this right side, okay? So if you're New York subliners right now, what you want to do is you want to keep them trapped here for as long as possible. In an ideal setup for P2, you have something like this. This is like an ideal setup for P2. You have someone maybe up there. You have somebody, if they want, maybe sitting there and maybe something like that, something around those lines, right? You just want to keep them trapped on the right side of the map. The main job is, if you're New York subliners right now, is to communicate effectively and make sure there's no missing gaps. You don't want to leave anything open because if they do flank you then it's going to cause havoc in your setup so right now new york subliners they're going to try to close a gap they're going to have people closing in and they're going to try to keep the red team sorry the blue team in this case uh toronto ultra on this side of the map let's go through and see what happens so as you see across three people down they go across again really good movement from kismet so when you're using a sub machine gun you just want to make sure your movement is on point you want to make sure you're utilizing that and cameraing your opponents back to the left side here hydra one thing i've really really like is the fact that he's not afraid to push out here he's getting a bit closer to this side and all they're doing is closing the angles they're really applying pressure on toronto ultra and they're making sure that toronto cannot escape there's no gaps in their setup if we just look right now look at this map right now you have number four skies he's all the way on the left bridge okay you have number one hydra all the way on the right there are no gaps in the in the new york sub, uh, subliner setup everyone has an angle literally kismet has the bridge with the help of skies sib has the whole middle map and hydra has the whole of the right side so right now there'll be no one that gets through without getting killed even right there you see envoy he didn't expect hydra to play this deep so when you're playing like new york right now this is a i would say perfect perfect setup the only thing you need to do is make sure if somebody does die you're able to kind of track them and make sure you don't leave any gaps as i say that number six is going to be on board he does fall behind so it's a bit of a weird one you can see they didn't really read it straight away they started to realize it after but it's just one of those where i think they were pushed out to a good amount so it is a bit annoying that the spawns do flip there because i feel like they play that pretty well but as we go through right now they obviously identify the spawn flip they turn around and they're ready for the new hill again kismet really good play on the hill there if we just pause for a second i mean sibs on five kismet on three already with 40 seconds on the hill basically that really really good start there from new york once again sib right now playing for that cruise missile you definitely 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 want to play for your streak if you're sib right now you're one off you want to play for that streak let's see what he does here goes through he's going to go across 
big, big kill there onto Scrap. That six in a row. He's got the cruise missile. Watch it through middle right now. And again, same thing here. You can see the pressure's coming through middle. Number four, Skies is watching the right. So Sib is now watching through middle. So what they're going to do right now, if you're New York subliners, is we're basically on P2, right? So we're going to go through it together and kind of slow it down. So on P2, there's two main spawn points. Spawn point number one is around there. Spawn point number two is around like around this area, okay? Obviously, there's actual spawn points, but these are the general areas. So right now, you're seeing two members of New York spawn around there. You're seeing the subs, Kiz and Hydra spawning around there. So during this time, you have Skies and Sib. So again, this is just using the minimap, using the communication. Sky, uh, Sib is watching the middle. Skies is watching the right. They know they don't have to worry about the flank. It's very unlikely they're going to get flanked because their teammates are behind them. So right now, Sib is trying to watch that. Skies is trying to watch that. During this time, if you're Toronto Ultra, you want to spam your equipment over. You want to make sure you're using your numbers to break the hill. If I'm Toronto right now, I'm probably sending three to the left and i'm just kind of going through because i feel like breaking through the middle it can be a little bit difficult however because they have this area free they probably can break through middle as well the main thing on this hill the main thing you want you want this area here if you can have this middle area here honestly it's such a solid area to control either side of the map so toronto right now they have to be quick if you're new york you need to buy time for your other teammates hydra and kismet so you see if siv goes through again playing the angle as well thing i don't like is kleenex is by himself here so right now even just the disconnect i feel like right now kleenex is gonna die so kleenex goes through he ends up dying right now kleenex is dead you see number one hydra he's going through he's picking up the middle so i'm just gonna watch the mini map right now and i can't see a world where envoy kills hydra so hydra goes through and there you go he gets a kill so just like i mentioned picking up those gaps is so crucial now they go through the last player is number five scrap there's no reason for scrap to push up why because his teammates just died he needs to wait for another wave but if we watch again from Hydra. Hydra's going through and I know that the action's going on on the right but if we pay attention to Hydra right now this is what makes New York so good right now. The fact that they're really picking up those gaps. They're not worried too much about the kills. They're really just making sure there's no gaps in the setup. So now Sib's got the middle. Kids and Skies have the right. Hydra has the whole left hand side and you can see there are no gaps in the setup. They're funneling New York so they're funneling Toronto through the right. Now Toronto broke the hill. Really good play from them but again they're prioritizing those spawns. Hydra goes through and they get those kills. Right there if New York was able to get those trades effectively they would have been able to hold the hill but it's all good. It happens in hardpoint the trades go through. Scrap's trying to break the hill. Great play there to get the first. Again if we look at the minimap right now what's going on? I think New York did a really good job there in terms of their positioning. They just lost a big, big gunfight. They lost three gunfights on the point and they basically lost that rotation. But now we go through, okay? If you're in New York right now, you are at the back of the new hill. So what's happening right now is they have the spawns for P3. They have the spawns for P3, but you don't want to be this reserved. If you're Toronto right now, you need to break this slowly. You need to go through. You need to get another wave of kills. That's kind of the key thing here. You need to get another wave of kills so that the red team, in this case, New York, spawn all the way around there. So that's your job right now. You're not too worried about the hill straight away. You're worried about the kills, and you're seeing that. That's exactly what's happening. If we go through, you see Scrap. He's not running towards the new hill, no. He's going for those kills. He's going for that rotation to get the spawn. So he goes across there. He spots one in the window, goes through. Really good read here. just trying to kind of isolate Skies in. But again, Skies doing such a good job just buying his time. I don't like that aggression from Skies here. I feel like you're really testing Scrap, who has one of the best gun skills in the game. He kind of overcommits there. And now if we look at the map here, let me show you the danger of what Skies did right there. Right now, you're seeing Skies kind of sitting back in the corner. I think he's doing a really good job of playing his life. But right here, he overcommits. And this is the danger of overcommitting. If we pause it right now, Skies playing his life there, okay? He's stopping Scrap from pushing through. If anything, he's buying time for his team to make a play. If you look at the minimap, number seven is by himself inside on the hill. So if Skies can buy enough time right now, number three should be able to kill inside and they should have control and then they should be able to get the rest of Toronto. But look how Skies overcommits. Now, if you look at the minimap, because Skies overcommits and Scrap is right there basically pre-aiming the spawn, what's going to happen is Skies is going to lose the spawn and now he spawns all the way on the other side of the map so now new york have more people to worry about insight wins that gunfight as well so right now you can see toronto are going to collapse onto the point so right there i think it was a really big misplay from new york mainly skies
dies there. I feel like he could have played his life a bit more, bought time for his teammates, and just like that, that one gunfight has completely flipped the hill here. So it's very important when you're in those scenarios to play your life effectively to maintain spawns. But we go through, and again, just like I mentioned, someone's going to be watching the flank. This time it's going to be Envoy, goes through. Really good play there from inside, just holding a good angle. Quite an obvious angle, to be fair, but it was a good play regardless. Goes through, the trades go in, and just like that, New York having an excellent start here but toronto bringing it back in this p3 here go across straight away number two it's going to be kismet kismet versus envoy that's what i'm looking at on the mini map here so envoy goes through he's watching this area and again i think it's just a misplay from kismet from envoy there i think it's a big misplay from envoy right there in this scenario you know that the players are pushing through and i really don't like this play let me explain what i personally would have preferred now again when i'm being critical here i'm not a pro but based on what i'm seeing I know they don't have the information all the time. We have attack maps, so it's very easy for us to be perfect when watching it back. But still, I think right now, you know the timing's there. You know the gap is there. And I feel like right now is a perfect example. You have your equipment with you if you're Envoy. You need to be using your grenade. You need to be making sure no one's coming through the right-hand side. I feel like right now, he just left a big gap open. Kismet goes through. He gets the kill, and then he gets to the back. That was a perfect play from Kismet. These are the things that we don't see on the scoreboard. Just that play right there. Look at what he's doing now. He's playing his life so well and he gets that kill what he just did was everything what kismet just did right there absolutely was insane he won them that rotation that's why when people look at the kills right now it's not just about the scoreboard it's about how valuable those kills are number six goes through it's six versus three right now sim on an absolute insane game goes across there sees one in the distance gets one shot and gets taken out but number four is on the pinch here sky's behind him gonna go through he gets the kill and just like that new york subliners are coming through the bottom toronto are still spawning oh, yeah. nearby skies right now Third he's in an absolute power spot though he's in a power spot he knows toronto are spawning near him okay so all you want to do right now if you're new york is just buy a few seconds here you can get the rotation just buy some time here be a nuisance in the back and that's exactly what he's doing right now they are literally trapping in new uh toronto that was an excellent play from new york one of the cleanest hard point breaks there because i think the position skies was in was so good let me kind of go through that that small position there on P on P4, okay, what normally happens is just there's two spawn points, okay? One spawn point is around like there, and the other spawn point is around there, okay? So right now, New York will keep them as a red team to keep it simple. New York was spawning there, so they were going through this side, okay? So again, keep it simple. They were kind of going through this area here. But during this time, Toronto was spawning there, so Toronto were going through there. Now, normally, what happens is you have a bit of a divide, right? So you have, for example subliners on the bottom and you have toronto on the top so you have a line like this but what ended up actually happy, uh, happening was toronto was spawning there subliner was spawning there but skies was standing in their spawn skies was standing in the kind of block here so he was just being a pain in the toronto setup so every time toronto was trying to rotate forward so you see they were trying to get through they were trying to break that kill skies was behind them and that was so important because now they have to look to their right and to their left and during this time they had people on the hill so it's such a good play from skies to kind of get behind the enemy lines and just make sure he's being a nuisance even if he doesn't get kills there him slowing the game down and making them check for him is so important you're seeing it right now skies is literally behind them so right now they're going through they're trying to pinch the hill they're both looking at kismet now if skies wasn't there they're both killing kismet but the fact that skies is shooting them from a different angle he's just doing such a good job high job being a nuisance middle map gets the kill again looking at the minimap awareness they know exactly where toronto spawns hydra's going through he knows they spawn here the fact that they haven't rotated towards him that means they've rotated back towards middle so kismet has got the call out from hydra saying okay they're probably coming towards bridge right now so again look at that he gets a stun off goes through gets a grenade i mean he should have killed he should have killed him there but there's another kill hydra playing his life really good stuff there and just like that okay Kismet, I think, should have done a lot better there. Kismet should have done a lot better in this scenario. But Hydra, being the bailout player he is, just made an insane play. Let's go through that again. Right now, we're on P3 going into P4. And you can see the early rotation from both teams. Hydra's going through and he knows exactly where they spawn, okay? They spawn right in front of him. Because they're not pushing towards him, he's giving the call out to Kismet, saying they're coming towards a bridge. So Kismet now should be ready for the gunfight. I think Kismet trolled that really badly. I think he needs to win that gunfight. But regardless, he knows 
knows that Envoy's one shot, so Hydra goes through and goes for the trade. If we look at the minimap right now, Hydra is by himself, and this is where your main players pop off. This is where you need to buy as much time as possible. If you're Hydra right now, you cannot die. If you die, you spawn all the way out, and then uh, Toronto get a good setup. So you just playing your life here is so important. He gets caught out, and again, right now, he uses the opponent's aggression towards his favor. He knows he's going to get pushed there. He knows he's getting pushed from Kleenex, so he goes through, and he absolutely fries him. And he just plays like that. Even though he was on one health, he buys time. And now you can see Sib. Sib's able to get through simply because of Hydra. Hydra buying the time right there allows Sib to get through, and he's almost getting that kill. So although they don't win those gunfights again, he's allowing the time for his teammates to go through and potentially make the play. And now once again, he's going behind. He's right behind his opponents. He's going through, and it's all about a timing thing. Number five is waiting. He's playing it patient. He's scrap. He knows he could be around here. This is a huge gunfight. And what's going on right now is, again, patience. I really love this play. Right now, that, this is a really good play. I was wondering why he took so long here. Let's kind of break it down. Right now, if you look at the minimap, you can see Hydra is far to the right. He's waiting for a play right now. So I wasn't sure why he was waiting here, but it makes sense because Sib is about to use his cruiser missile. So as he goes through right now, he's playing it patiently. What they're trying to do, they're trying to collapse on the hill as soon as a cruise goes in. So now Sib's got the cruise missile. You can see the communications going through. And Scrap, I think, makes a huge play. Scrap putting that gunfight really changes the outlook of this hill now. Because of that, they're not able to break it. So right there, I think... Everything relied on Hydra. I have to say, Scrap made a really good play. I don't love the cruise missile from uh, from Sky, uh, Sib, uh, Skies there. Sorry, Sib there. I feel like they should have relied a bit more on their teamwork and not just on Hydra. They relied on Hydra to make a play, and it, it kind of cost them at the end there. But as I say that, what a break on the hill. Really good stuff there. They end up literally slamming through the front there, breaking the hill and winning their trades. Honestly, Hydra is everything right now. Hydra is just everything. Him and Kismet is popping off, but when I see Hydra's PO, man there's a reason this guy was mvp it is such an insane pov the things he does with, this, with an smg is just crazy bro he's just insane man goes through envoy takes that one this game isn't over though i know obviously we know the score but the game isn't over there's still plenty to play for play for and right now i love the route from kleenex okay New York subliners have every single person watching the right. Kleenex is going to make a play and flank them right now. He goes through, he takes out one. Okay, okay, okay. He needs to win that. He needs to win that. That gunfight right there literally just lost them 40 seconds. That is insane. That gunfight right there literally just lost them 40 seconds. But I'm going to pay attention to something else. Let's actually go through that again. And I want to show you exactly when New York make that switch, okay? Right now, Kleenex is making an absolute play on the flank here. He goes through, and for some reason, he messes up. But right now, if he gets this kill, this hill is completely different. And this shows you the margins in Call of Duty. So he goes through, and he gets taken out. Now, don't get me wrong. He got absolutely fried there. But in a normal world, he probably wins that gunfight. But again, this just shows the margins. Really good kill from Kismet there to get that kill. He goes across now, and that's four down. Just like that, the setup breaks. Now, what I want you to do is pay attention to the minimap. I want you to look at the arrows of number two and number four, okay? So it's Kismet and Sib. As soon as they get the kills, they start to stretch the map out. They're no longer staying still. They stretch the map out so that New York have an easier setup to hold, and they have all their angles. So immediately, Skies goes to the right-hand side, and Sib goes goes to the bridge so uh sorry kismet goes to the bridge so now they have the whole map covered obviously hydra loses his gunfight middle but the concept is still the same they're able to stretch the map now skies goes through and you see kleenex has to look for him so it's not as easy to break the hill as soon as he gets that kill onto skies he gets traded on the hill that's why when you're in a setup where you have map control you don't want to play too tight together you want to make sure the enemies are looking for you at multiple angles that was a perfect example kleenex got the kill but he wasn't able to break it he had to look for skies before he floods into the point. So make sure when you have the point, you're holding it from multiple angles. Really, really good stuff there. And that was honestly a perfect hold from New York. Besides the death from Hydra there, I think the recovery was really well done. They go across, they know the spawns are a little bit all over the place. And again, just Kismet standing here. Like, look at that. It, you could just tell it was falling their way there. But you, you can only get the luck if you create the space for yourself. Like, again, I feel like I was a bit fortunate from him, but you only get that if you're creating the space. They go through there are two people through middle let's see what they do here honestly the gunfight's going back and forward right now let's see how new york break this compared to how toronto have so as they go through right now 
Six is by himself middle. He's going to go across and he gets taken out. So just like that, they lose the middle and then they lose the gunfight. So I think as a team, honestly, it's just nowhere near as coordinated as New York subliners. The holds you're seeing right now from New York are just slightly better than what you're seeing from Toronto. So they go through Envoys by himself. Again, single pushing is so common right now that I'm seeing from Toronto. And I feel like it really did cost him this map there. If we go back there, because I want to see when that happened. So obviously this first gunfight goes through. Right now you're seeing a lot of single pushes from Toronto. And I think this is a real big factor that costs him this map. Envoy's by himself here. You see there's a big divider, okay? He's going through. He's trying to break the hill. But if we just pause it right now. Envoy's playing aggressive. He's by himself on the hill. And the rest of Toronto haven't rotated yet. So right now it's a very easy kill for New York. Because there's three members looking around. He's not even looking at number one here. Hydra gets a kill. Kismet kills inside. And now there's four people for uh, New York and two for Toronto. You see Scrap goes through. He's trying to fight one. He gets traded by Hydra. So I think right now the biggest difference is just a team element. Even Kleenex at the end there, right? Scrap just died. Now I know in this scenario it's not perfect. But within 10 seconds they're holding whole team falls apart and i think they just need to be more patient even right now if you're kleenex and your whole team just died there is no reason to full send this look he's going for a kill that's obviously going to result in a death because he's by himself so me personally i feel like something phase do really well majority of the time is they take their time breaking hills and they break it together right now we just saw new york hold a hill pretty easily because toronto decided to break it one by one really big mistake there from toronto and it allows new york to fully set up and spawn trap them for the next hill i think again you go through they just good kills there to be fair really good kills there i just feel like you need to do a better job there but it's the same thing there is no reason why envoy is going by himself there and number eight's not there yet it's just a big pacing issue for me like cleaning gets the kills eventually but it's like why are we even like chancing it there like i just feel like the pacing issue needs to be addressed for toronto this specific map they go through don't get me wrong really good break there but if i'm being ultra critical because i think ultra are a phenomenal team right so i want them to be the best version i'm like watching this back i'm like honestly bro there's so many easy team fights i just feel like they didn't even go for they went for so many individual fights goes through really good play there from eight to pick up number two there so i'm loving what kleenex is doing right now watching the flank right now again they're isolating the players through this is fine them losing that gunfight there i think is unlucky it's not the end of the world but can we just look at the mini map look how number one two and the how's that who's that who's that yeah look at number one two and four are playing for new york just look at this right now okay look at the minimap right now you're seeing three people from new york go together and this is what i mean by teamwork they're going through together they're baiting and switching they go across one gets one shot he goes through and he's able to trade them effectively the trades are going in and new york are able to win the gunfights just at the end there it's a 1v1 now right there although toronto wins that gunfight the fact that new york were the aggressive team there and they didn't waste any time they went for the trades is really effective you want to make sure you're using your teamwork and right there was a perfect example again toronto win the team fight there but that's not the point the point is it was close it was a 1v1 at the end hydra goes through he's by himself again the cruise missile comes in now he takes his time he baits him in and just the fact that hydra was able to get through there was everything and they break the hill that was one of the best breaks i've seen in a while let's go back and see what happened and honestly hydra did everything there so right now you're seeing new york with okay let me back away because this was yo how do they do this right now if i can show you this picture you can see that two people are down for new york and there are four up for toronto so right now there are no reasons for new york to break the hill but hydra there's a reason why this man was mvp he's by himself he goes through the bottom and gets the first kill so look at the kill feed he goes through and he kills scrap so just him sneaking through and killing scrap right now has caused some problems for toronto because now they know hydra is around them they need to look for him this is buying time for the rest of his team insight is now chasing hydra so he goes through he's trying to get the kill so now insights off the hill scrap has died okay so that's two people distracted again buying time for the rest of his team as the cruise is coming in you see insight goes away gets into cover hydra plays his life sib gets the kill onto envoy and they know exactly where insight is hydra goes through and gets the kill so within 10 seconds they were able to use a cruise missile hydra was able to get two that was a 
perfect perfect break from new york so make sure if you guys are trying to break it as a team you do stuff like that you play your timings well you take your time and you really communicate well and pick up those easy kills that was an excellent break break from new york now shout out to sid man that guy has had two cruise missiles this game alone you see skies on almost two minutes on the hill i think this whole new york team i think they're gonna be an absolute threat for the next major now Looking the thing is, okay, first of all, this guy is just insane, bro. What is he doing? Oh, my God. He's, he, this kid is something else. Can we can we just watch that again? Like, what the fuck did I just see? Bro, there's a reason why Hydra's MVP. Like, look what he does right now. Again, I know people do this in rank play, but when you're doing this at the highest level, like, just plays like this. He goes to the outside of the map pair. He plays his timing perfectly, and then he flanks him for the five for the five streak. Like, the guy is the best in the game for a reason. Now they're going through. They're holding the angle. He almost gets another one, but, yeah, this guy's just insane. But like I was saying earlier, I think a big part of New York is I feel like they, they needed to find the balance in their team. I don't think the talent was ever the issue. It was purely the balance. Now... My take on this whole thing is like everyone's saying this whole priest the thing. Look, I think priest is a good player. Okay, but when you get Sib in, okay, you're not getting someone that can't play Call of Duty. This guy can shoot. However, I think the system that New York has is a very, very high play system. I think it's one of the best systems in the game. As in, when they're playing well, they're one of the best teams we've seen in the studio era. So I think Sib fitting into that system, it did take some time. It did take some adjusting. But you're seeing it right now. When he's used to that system, the man is on 31 kills. This isn't the same Sib we saw at the start of the season. However, it's not just Sib. We're seeing Kismet play better. We're seeing Skies with 28 engagements and two and a half minutes on the hill. Now, me personally, I don't mind that because I think he's getting the best out of the rest of his team. And it's one of those selfless roles that basically gets you the win. And I think, again, I think you see Insight have this as well when they're playing well. He has low engagements, but I think that's to be a balance. I think you can't just have that player that has low engagement when you're losing i think there has to be a balance like right now if you're skies this works because you're clearly clearly picking up those lanes with lower engagements you're clearly doing something right the fact that your ar duo is double positive and you have two and a half minutes on the hill there's clearly something here that's working for them so i think it really does depend on your team formula but i think just looking at that game man i mean bro i was i was kind of glazing hydra all game long i ain't gonna lie to you but shout out to Sid, man, the guy with 33 and 17, just an insane game. And again, we're at that point of the season now where, you know, the spawns, and I think everyone knows and stuff in terms of, you know, the viewers as well, you guys watching. I think it's more about the teamwork. The real thing I'm trying to really go through is how the teams are playing together and how they're using teamwork to get the win. But YouTube, if you guys enjoy that breakdown, drop a like and I'll catch you guys for another one tomorrow. Peace.